Okay, so, hello, welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, this is my first time lecturing in Växjö and I'm really excited because all of you are new faces for me, I guess. I haven't had anyone, no. Uh, in, it's always fun to come to a lecture room that is actually this full. There are a couple of places left, but it should be. So great. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are streaming this lecture. So if you, for some reason, can't attend on, on campus, you can always watch this uh, on a service called Live Coding TV. I will get into details about that. So I welcome all of you on Live Coding as well. Um, my name is uh, Johan Leitet, and I'm the course coordinator for this course. Together with John Hegerud, uh, John can't wave because he's on the other side of the camera in Kalmar, uh, producing uh, this lecture from there. Uh, but me and John are the persons you will have contact with mostly during the course. We have some helpers as well in Mats, uh, Locke and Jakob Lindehoff. Uh, they will mainly uh, help us during examinations because we have oral hearings in this course which are quite intense on staff because we need to have a hearing with each and every one of you and that's why we are four people in this course. We'll get into details about that as well. So the, this first like 20-25 minutes is just an introduction to the course, how we will work. I guess we will work quite differently from the courses you are used to. Uh, Vecchio and Kalmar got together in 2010 as you know and uh, we have computer science department in Vecchio shared with a comp computer science department in Kalmar and of course we have a little bit of the different tradition regarding uh, 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 how we do stuff during courses. So you will probably see a lot of differences in this course. So this course introduction is to present some of the concepts for you that are probably new uh, and other, other things that might be new. Um, we have uh, for you on uh, that are not in the classroom. We have a Slack channel. I will go over that as well in a bit. But this uh, Slack channel, I monitor it during the lecture. So if you have any questions, you can post them in the Slack channel. You guys as well on, on, on here on campus can, can post questions on the Slack channel and I will try to answer them or just raise your hand as usual. Um, uh, I'm also program coordinator for the web developer program. That's a program in Kalmar. Uh, uh, if, do you know Ola Flykt? I guess you do, right? Yeah, I'm kind of his uh, comparison in, in Kalmar. So uh, I'm a program coordinator and, and try to, to yeah, coordinate stuff, basically. And I also teach in, in web development techniques, like I, I, I used to teach, I should say, in HTML and CSS, and we will have a short introduction uh, around that today. But Mainly today, I, I focus on client-side JavaScript, um, and that's a big, uh, big thing about this course as well. So uh, I, I jumped a slide, and this is just something that might be new to you as well. Every, all the materials surrounding this course is uh, Creative Commons, so uh, anyone who feels like it could uh, reuse uh, the things we produce, as with these lectures, if you like. Um, okay, let's get down to business. Please, please uh, could we have some kind? Of, which uh, grade are you? Second grader or third grader? Third. third. Yeah, all of you. Uh, and we have some uh, reading this as a freestanding course as well, I guess. Um, okay, so and it's mainly the uh, network security program and uh, software development. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So this course is a computer science course. It's a G1F course. So it's a basic course that requires some knowledge. It's not a completely basic course, but uh, we need some knowledge be on beforehand. And you have probably, all of you, more or less, have read this 1DV06. I think it's Jonas' course, right? Uh, the first object-oriented course. Uh, 
you should have read something like that because we will not go over how to write an if statement or how to do loops and stuff. We will just bridge between Java mainly. I, I haven't teached Java since like 2002, so my knowledge around Java is a little like that. But we will try to bridge between Java and JavaScript. Uh, because <coughs> in the foundation, those are two completely different languages. Uh, JavaScript is quite influenced by Java, but they have nothing in common, more or less. They, they stem from different trees uh, in, in the programming language landscape. Uh, but we will go over that uh, in this course. Um, you have the syllabus here if you like to have a look and we will go over some of the things. This is what you should be able to do after this course. You should be able to create, I would say, basic web pages uses, using HTML and CSS. We won't focus a lot on HTML and CSS, mainly because HTML isn't that hard, so we could quite easily go through that. CSS is just a hazard, and we will go as far as we can at least handle the basic stuff around CSS. Uh, there are many courses uh, you can take in other subjects that focus on CSS. We won't do that. We will have the basic knowledge around CSS in this course. Uh, hands up, how many of you have uh, written something in HTML and CSS? Okay, so most of you, not, not all of you. Yeah. Uh, we will start at the beginning. We will leave a lot of the HTML and CSS up to you, you to, to self uh, use resources and, and, and learn uh, those things. I will go over that soon. Um, you will analyze this, this sentence. I don't know if I wrote it or someone else, but analyze problems and then and then to evaluate and show us appropriate design and construct a solution in the form of programs in the programming language JavaScript. Okay, you are going to analyze the problem and construct the program in JavaScript, basically. Uh, you should be able to describe a web browser's different internal components and their interactions, uh, uh, including browser uh, security mechanisms. Uh, so we will have basic security, a, a lecture around security in the browser. You who read the network security program have probably gone deeper than we will go in this course. Have you, for instance, have you had a look at HTTPS? Yeah, so you know the encryption methods and stuff under the surface. We will touch upon those. Uh, HTTPS is a very, it's a key part for making modern web applications, so we, we need to, to to have a look at it uh, in this course as well. This course, I should say, is this is the first in a series. How many of you are going to take another course called 1DV 523, I think? Uh, the uh, web based, uh, a server based web programming course that comes after this one. Not so many, okay. Uh, because that course will build upon this one. Uh, and we will uh, focus in this course on the client, on the web browser, and in the next course we will focus on the server. And by focusing on the server, we will focus even more on security, of course. Um, yeah, you should be able to create web applications with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS have clear roles and are clearly separated. And this is one thing I will uh, push uh, quite a lot, that we will separate stuff. We will, I mean, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, you could more or less just put it in a big haversack and mix it up together and get some kind of result, but you won't get far in making modern web applications that way, so we will try to separate those layers really clear. Uh, you will be able to store and with asynchronous communication transfer data with the task appropriate data formats. Okay. Have you read about XML? Have you used XML? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we won't use a lot of XML in this course. Uh, we will use JSON instead, uh, which is a data format that are really much simpler to work with than XML. Uh, and um, we will use that together with ADX, or asynchronous communication, and WebSockets as well. Uh, but we will come to that later. 
Okay, so the approach. We have divided this course into three parts. Part one, two and three. The first one is about basic HTML and CSS, uh, together with uh, a brief overview of the JavaScript language. In short, we can say this first part is two courses on the web developer program concentrated into uh, three weeks or something like that. So the, the new web programmers, the first graders, are having the are learning to program right now using JavaScript. Uh, so we are using JavaScript as the main language in, in, in Kalmar right now. Um, and we will like sum up the, the most important stuff for you and, and put it into this course. Um, we uh, on the second uh, and then we will go over HTML and CSS as I said. Part two will focus on the DOM. That's the API of the browser. It's a mess because it's been around since the 90s. Uh, and you have all heard about this like browser wars that were going on when Internet Explorer and Microsoft tried to, to, uh, to, to win over Netscape. And uh, later, Firefox came. And now Chrome is dominating. Um, and this DOM has been there since the beginning uh, with all faults intact, basically. So we will try to learn to master the DOM. Um, it's not a fun API. It's, it's quite intu intuitive, at least. So um, the DOM is what you use to, to basically modify stuff on a web page. Uh, ADX, uh, that's the word that came like in the mid, uh, in, in 2007 or something like that. But that is communication. Uh, seamlessly between the, the server and the client, making uh, like up live updates and stuff possible that wasn't possible before you had to reload the page all the time. We will have a look at that and uh, the pre 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 successor is called like that uh, web sockets that that are even uh, a more modern product protocol, even easier to work with, even faster. Uh, a yep. Uh, AJAX, is it an API in the browser or does it come from jQuery? Uh, it's an API in the browser uh, called uh, HTTP request. Uh, HTTP, I, I forgot the word, HTTP request. Ah, we will get to that. But yeah, it's an API in the browser. Then jQuery, for instance, if you know, know what jQuery is, a jQuery just simplified it and, and made, I mean, we had a standardized API, uh, but some browsers implemented it in, a, some, in another way that made us developers need to make a choice. Okay, should we just support this browser or should we write code for all the browsers? jQuery just simplified it, made it like uh, a facade and uh, uh, offered a simpler API. But today in modern, that, that's a couple of years ago. Today it's, it's standardized, no problem to use in all browsers. So it's even on phones or whatever. Uh, we have storage in the web browser as well. Uh, we have uh, even SQL servers running in the browser. We won't focus on them. We will focus on simpler web storage, uh, uh, key value storage in the browser. In the third part, we will focus on something called SPAS, uh, single page applications, uh, which is if, I mean, if you, if you launch Spotify in the web browser, that's a single page application. You, you, you launch the application and then you play music, you go into an album, you browse, br browse everything seamlessly. Um, and we will make a quite a complex SPA application in the end of this course. Um, with a lot of, I mean, the, the last assignment in this course is what you make of it. We have some requirements, but you could make whatever you like uh, around this. We had people doing, implementing Tetris uh, games using graphic APIs. You can use sound APIs, video, and whatever you like, more or less. Uh, in this first, uh, uh, yeah. During the course, we have around 10, lec 10 lectures, a little bit fewer than you're used to, I guess, in a seven and a half points course. Um, we will always have the lectures on Wednesdays, quite compressed. 
I commute from Kalmar, so I started at 7, took the bus to the train, took the train to the station and took the bus up here and came here like five minutes early. So uh, if everything works, I will be here 9.30 every Wednesday. If something breaks at <laughs> somewhere on the line, then I might not be here. Uh, and you will have a message in Slack what has happened. Yeah. Yeah, every Wednesday the lectures will be held in Vekhe. If you guys just stop to show up on lectures and take them online, then maybe I will stay at home and uh, record the lectures or stream the lectures on Kalmar. But my, I, I mean, that, that's another thing. I want to meet you guys and see how it's going. So I will be here 9.30 for a tutoring pass uh, or tutoring half an hour or something like that. So if you have any problems, I will be here. 9.30 on Wednesdays before the lecture starts. And maybe like a quarter after this, the, the last lecture before I need to run to the bus. So, so uh, you can catch me here Wednesdays. Um, we will, uh, we, ha we only had 10 lectures, but we will also have something that I think is new for you uh, and that's called peer instructions. Have you had any peer instructions before? No, it's, it's, it's kind of a lecture, but it's an interactive lecture. Uh, there has been a lot of research uh, put into peer instructions showing that uh, they increase uh, uh, the performance of students. They, students who have peer instructions in their courses do better than students only attending lectures. Um, what it means is that you will show up here. It's really, really important. If, if you don't show up on lectures, please show up on the, the peer instructions because that's like if you are not here, we can't do any peer instructions. So on the peer instruction, you will sit here. You will have your mobile phone or your computer or whatever. You will uh, attend the link and questions will pop up on that link. So we will ask a question. You will all vote anonymously. If the vote says that, OK, more than 30% of you don't know this, then you will have a group discussion, discussion discussing the matter like for three or four minutes, and then we will have a new vote. If the vote still says that less than 30% uh, or less than 70% knows this matter, then I will probably say a few words around it because then that's a white spot uh, for you. If like 95% of you answers correctly, then we will just skip that topic because you know it. And those 5% who don't know it probably hasn't read uh, anything, so we they will know that then. So two peer instructions we'll try in this course. Uh, they are for part two and part three, so later on. They will also be on Wednesdays, so they will, there won't be any lectures that week. We will have the peer instruction instead, I think. Uh, tutoring each week, as I said, um, do we have any? I, I know we have some, some, some people who called me and said that they can't attend Kalmar just yet permits coming into Sweden and stuff. So they will probably take the course uh, using distance learning at the beginning at least. Uh, other than that, I think all of you are campus students. Uh, that means that you are free to use distance learning communication to ask questions and get tutoring, of course, when we are not here on Wednesdays. Uh, but for the main part, the examinations will be in, in Kalmar. And we have three examination assignments, uh, one for each part. And each examination assignment will uh, lead up to an oral hearing. So you will, in practice, you will do a programming task, like a lab, but it's an examination assignment. So you will program this for yourself. Uh, and you will hand it in using GitHub. I will go over that as well. But you will hand it in using GitHub. Uh, then you will book a time for uh, examining this assignment. Um, that will be a 30 minute uh, time slot. You will be able to book it for yourself. So if you are, your mind is sharper at the, the late afternoon, then welcome. You can, uh, can choose a time like that. Um, uh, 
then at the time of the examination, we, uh, you will have book, uh, room booked and you will know which room you will attend to. And in that room, I will be there or Mats or Jan or Jacob. So some of us will be there. Oh, Schamslecke. How nice. So, um, and we will question you. Or actually it's more like an a discussion around your code mixed up with theoretical questions around the topic. So it's not good enough to come with code and yes, I made this, I'm, is it okay now? No, you need to be able to talk about your code, to reason about your code, to answer questions why you did certain choices in your code during this examination. And you will upon that have questions like, okay, Ajax, what does that stand for? Is it a built-in API or is it uh, something stemming from jQuery? Questions like that. Um, and instead of a written exam, we, we like this method better because on a written exam, you can actually misinterpret the question and answer something that is completely wrong. If you misinterpret it, uh, uh, that's a hard word. Uh, uh, a question on an oral hearing, we could like kick you in the right direction, so to speak. So we have been really successful with the, those oral hearings. It's quite nervous for a student at the beginning, but you will come around, I, I promise you. Questions about that? Yeah? No written exam in the end. No written exam in the end, all oral hearings. And that's, that's because in Kalmar, all of our courses, all of our programs are distance and campus courses uh, or so-called hybrid courses. So we have people sitting in like China, uh, ne Nepal and uh, USA and everywhere. So we can't have a written exam. Um, it takes a lot of resources from our part, but the result in the end is quite good. I won't, I, I will just go over those really quick, but the first part, nah. Yeah, the first part is four lectures. It's today, two lectures today, two lectures next week. Then you have an ex uh, examination assignment that is already published on the course webpage. So you can start with it whenever you like. The second part, I've talked about those, so just skip those. Uh, three lectures in that part. Those lectures, yeah. So, so this course has an equal e equivalent in, in Kalmar that went last year. Uh, and we'll go after this course this year again. So, uh, so the lectures for the second and third part, they are already recorded uh, in Swedish. So if you really want to study ahead, so you, you who speak Swedish could, could use those lectures. They are linked on the course webpage. But of course, I will have those lectures once again in English this year for all, of, all the others. Uh, skip that, skip that. Okay, literature. Uh, we have this eloquent JavaScript. It's an online resource. You, c you don't need to buy it. You can uh, just uh, visit the address over there. Um, it's, it's even better online than in, in a textbook because you can alter the examples and, and play around with the examples uh, right in the book and, and run them and see, see the result. Uh, this <coughs> book is written like two years ago, so it it, it's based upon the JavaScript standard that was uh, the latest then. Uh, right now, JavaScript is releasing one new update each year. So since this book, there has been two, I think, new updates. I think the new update for 2016 is just out. Uh, so I will, on the lectures, show modern, more modern examples or newer constructions but that, that are not in the book, but I will like have a bridge between them. So I will show the old way and the new way. Yeah. Is that ES6? Yeah, and even e ES 2016. So the ES, uh, let's see how it is. The ES6, I think is to, uh, the ES 2015. So I think ES7 is 2016. They have like double names, so it's really confusing, but you could say like ES 2016. So uh, I, f I think it's like that. Jan, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, 
But yeah, we will go over that as well when we start with JavaScript next week. Uh, if you like, if you really like to read, the, we have this, uh, uh, Nicolas Sakas is a real uh, profile in the JavaScript community. He's written a book a couple of years ago called, uh, or several years ago with new uh, editions, Profe Professional JavaScript for Web Developers, a really good book. This goes more into details of everything. It's like this thick. Um, you don't need it for the course, but if you really like to read, I could recommend that book. Uh, I don't think there is a new edition with the newer JavaScript versions on this one as well. Okay, this is a major. You will be using a lot of tools. Okay, so first of all, this is my nightmare question. Do all of you have access to own computers like laptops? Is there anyone who don't? Oh, yeah, good. Uh, because you are, we have tried to run our courses on the Linnaeus University computers and that's just not going to work because it's a lot of tools, it's virtualization and the university just don't want to open up the computers that, to the extent that we need to run those courses. So in Kalmar all the programs have mandatory computers, they need to have a computer to take the courses. Uh, you don't have that but looks like everyone uh, have a computer anyway, so that's good. So on your computer, if it's Windows, uh, Mac OS or uh, Linux, I don't care, but you need to have some stuff installed. You need Git. Have you used Git? Have all of you used Git for version control? No? Okay, you will a lot in this course. Uh, WebStorm 10 or JetBrains WebStorm, it's, kind, it, it, it's the uh, IDE. Uh, uh, it's kind of like Eclipse. Uh, or what have you used in Java? Eclipse. Eclipse. Yeah. Yeah. Inter yeah. And I mean, this is not written in stone. You don't need to use WebStorm if you don't like. You can use Eclipse uh, if if you like. Uh, we don't care about which IDE you use. If there are examples, we will show the examples in WebStorm. So you can use Atom, uh, GitHub Atom, or Sublime, or whatever. Uh, VirtualBox and Vagrant, have you used Vagrant? Some of you. Okay, so Vagrant is a virtualization um, environment for developers. So instead of installing a lot of stuff on our own computer, we can install those in a virtual machine running inside of our computer. Because if you are a web developer today and working on several projects, you will have like Okay, I need node version 5 in that one, and I need node version 2 in that one, and then I need Python, and I, I, you need a lot of stuff. And if you install all of those stuff on your computer, it will break down eventually, and you will have a lot of dependencies that, that break. So instead, you use Vagrant or something similar to, uh, uh, to run all those uh, programs inside of the virtual computer. Uh, then you can have like a virtual computer for every project. Uh, and actually a lot of projects today, you can fork them on GitHub, you download, you just type Vagrant up, all dependencies get installed inside, and you can test the application. If you don't like it, you just erase it, instead of needing to install a lot of stuff on your computer. Can you use um, Docker? Could you use Docker instead? Probably. Uh, for let me see, I, I, I don't think you need to use Vagrant from our perspective, so you could use Docker if you like. Um, yeah, you could. Uh, but as, as I said with WebStorm, all examples will be in Vagrant. So. And there's nothing saying that you can't use both, that you can use Docker inside Vagrant, for instance. That's possible, I guess. Docker is more like the production side of things and Vagrant is more the developer side of things. But I, I guess in Docker today you can do the stuff you can in Vagrant as well. So, yeah. uh, there are some instructions on the web page on how to install those. Uh, in Vagrant you need Node.js, uh, which is the environment in which the JavaScript programs will run. Uh, you will need something called JSCS and JSHint. We will uh, um, have instructions about that and, and many more. 
but that doesn't matter because you install it in Vagrant or we have prepare, prepared Vagrant machines for you, so, so they will be magically installed. Um, but it's a lot of tools in this course. So if, if you're going to do something right about now, start to install those tools. Uh, VirtualBox is just a virtualization environment for Vagrant. So uh, Vagrant needs VirtualBox. Um, that's why it's there. No questions from live coding as well? No? Yep. What do you mean by you will install the Node.js Yeah, so this is like a Linux box. So instead of installing it with a Windows installer on your own computer, you install it inside a Linux uh, environment instead. Uh, this Vagrant, we won't use it until uh, part two. So the first part you can do in like Notepad if you like. Uh, I don't recommend it, but you could. Does Ola have a question? No? Yeah, just watching. Yeah. Welcome. Um, yeah, but we will go over that when we get to part two. The most important address you need to know right now is the address to the course web page. We are not using Moodle, as you have noticed. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Moodle, uh, so we developed our own systems back in like 10 years ago or something like that. Uh, and that's still up and running today. Uh, it's called CoursePress. You have the link here. If you're registered on the course, you find the same link at LNUS slash student. Uh, everything static, static will be there, like some news and course content and recordings and stuff like that. Uh, if you want a discussion, don't do it in CoursePress because it's not built for discussion. A better tool is Slack. Uh, we use Slack for all of our courses because it's a great tool, basically. Uh, you can use it on your phone, on your computer or whatever. Uh, you should sign up for Slack using your student email and uh, be sure to go in and uh, uh, click subscribe to the 1DV525. Uh, channel. So that's like the ner life nerve of, of this course. Just right there and we will answer as quickly as we can and you can answer each other. It's a quite a good uh, environment and, and probably you can ask, they're all like topic JavaScript, so you, if you don't want to ask in this course, you can ask in the topic JavaScript and then you have all the Kalma students as well uh, being able to uh, to answer your questions. And actually a lot of students who now work at companies with JavaScript who are still in the community. So uh, that's a good way to start. Uh, we have an email. Don't, please don't mail me personally. Uh, use this, this address, 1dv525 at lnu.se. It will reach me or John. And whoever is, uh, ha have, have the most time will answer you. Uh, I will be away for like a week in October um, uh, on a family trip, but that's a week when you have examination. I, I don't think that will affect you uh, so much. Right, that's, I were supposed to show the course space as, as well. I won't more than quick, quick, quick. Where's my pointer? My God. What? Ah, huh, there it is. Uh, so it looks something like this. Is that this some of you? No? I think it's Vecco students anyway. Uh, okay, so it's quite simple. You have the Slack channel, you have the syllabus. If you want to watch live, you have the link here. Uh, we have a getting started guide. Start, start off by this. This is how you install some, some of the stuff you, during the course. On this one, LOO, all, uh, the presentation is there, and I will uh, put up the recording afterwards as well if you want to watch again if you miss something. Okay, so this is part one, part two, and part three, and you will find all appropriate links here. And this is the lecture we will start in a couple of minutes. Uh, uh, as, w uh, as with this course introduction, the lecture will be uh, available here if you just want to watch the slides, and the recording will be put up later this afternoon or tomorrow. Uh, the lecture is, as I said, streamed you, uh, on uh, Live Coding TV. Um, so if you visit uh, this link here, oh, I wonder what will happen. Um, you can log, yeah, I will hear myself, of course. So, 
Ja, oh. yeah. rundgång på svenska. Um, but we are live here right now, so please you can know. Oh, we went offline. Did I break something? How could I? Uh, oh, well, please, uh, you can visit that. Uh, yeah, what I was supposed to say is you can always, uh, if you miss a lecture, you can go into Live Coding uh, TV and all previous recordings will be there right after this one. So if you like, you can, if you are late, for instance, you can uh, watch it there. Okay, questions? No? Clear as... Cove spot. <laughs>